Outsiders, hello, Tony from the Outsider Channel here with you once again today, and today is a celebration. That's right, we just hit 20,000 subscribers this past week. Thank you so much for helping me grow the channel, being a part of the channel, being a part of the community. I can't tell you how flattered I am that you actually wanna tune in every week to see me talk gibberish and ride my bike. So thank you. Hopefully it's been entertaining and informative and you've got a little chunk of my life in there too. So today I wanna do a little something extra. We have an Ask Me Anything in AMA that I put questions out on Patreon, YouTube, and Instagram this past week. I can't get to all them, but we're gonna get to a nice chunk, a smorgasbord, if you will, of questions. Uh, to start things off, we're gonna do a giveaway today, yeah. And all you have to do to enter is leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel. The comment I want you to leave below is to name my new drone, name the SkyDO2, my new little buddy in the sky. Next week, I'm gonna choose my favorite. That's gonna be the name of the SkyDO2. That person who names the drone is gonna win all this stuff. Sport RX tees, all sizes, water bottles, YT gear, simplistic gear, hats, tees, and my favorite products I use for pre and post ride goodness for sore muscles, a Minion DHF 29 2.5, my favorite front tire right now. I'm riding on the Jeff C. A pair of shoes out of my personal stash. Sorry, size 10 only, but they're a pair of the new Camber Cranks, blue and black from Etnies and all sorts of stickers from all these brands, including some of the new Outsider stickers that I just got in. There you go. All right, I'm gonna meet you on the other side, put my glasses on, I got my uh, computer, and we'll get down to some questions. Okay, up first we're gonna go and uh, bring in my Patreon fam. If you guys want to join up and get on group rides, early video releases, product giveaways, right there, that's all you need to do, two or four dollars a month. And this is where you could throw some extra support in the channel. It's how I pay for my drone, it's how I pay for some of the trips I'm going on. All of it goes into the gas tank, the tin can, if you will, into the fun for travel. So thanks to all of you on Patreon and you future members. So. First question is from Doug Luce. Doug wants to know if I learned uh, my bike skills from a clinic or lessons or if I just learned them on my own. I think it's just about bike time. You gotta get your bike, you gotta put it on the trail, and you gotta ride it. But on the back end, you can do some research too and just watch videos. Videos are gonna help you stay motivated and wanna get out there and ride because they're just fun to watch. And they're also gonna show you different things that you may not have thought of on where to place the bike in certain things and cornering, drops and jumps, things like that, that the pros take for granted. So you can take in some of that experience if you're looking for it. Mike Savicki wants to know, outside of mountain biking, are there other hobbies or what are some other things I enjoy? Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed by some of the stuff in the background or clothes they wear sometimes, but I'm a pretty huge gamer. Uh, I was on the hunt for the new Xbox and PlayStation 5, got them both recently. Uh, priorities in life as a grown-ass adult, right? Got my first Nintendo in the 80s, and I've been hooked ever since. Uh, in my early career, right after college, I even worked at MTV Games at the uh, Viacom building in Times Square. For a bit, I was a part of Rock Band. I was very green in the uh, world of work, I guess you could say, after my skate career, but I learned a lot. That's how I got into social media and marketing and things like that. I love movies, as you could probably tell in the channel. I love a good craft beer. I'm a lifelong skater too, which I'm sure we're gonna get to some of those types of questions in a little bit. Thanks, Mike. Trail Shark MTV asks, uh, would I ever clip in to going down any summit trails? Uh, nope and uh, I wouldn't clip in going down any trails. I've uh, always ridden flats. That's just how my mountain biking has started and I don't really see any uh, use in changing it up. I'm gonna do what I'm comfortable with. I'm not trying to go and become a pro downhill racer. So uh, I really like the feeling of being able to move my feet around. I don't want to switch my brain around and have to relearn a technique. Uh, when I started skating and moved into snowboarding, uh, one of the hard things for me in snowboarding was feeling like I'm stuck in the board. I really like to kick things away. I actually, when I crash sometimes, if I'm gonna jump, one of the things I still do naturally is kind of get the bike away from me. And I feel like with me being clipped in, it's not gonna be as automatic. So you do what you're comfortable with. If you like clips, stick with them. I don't know. I don't really like the big craze of like switching back and forth. If you're curious, give it a shot. For me, I'm sticking to it. Blair Legat wants to know uh, the history of MTB, where it started and uh, some other things. I would say instead of getting into the whole background, uh, there's a really great documentary that was put out a few years back of where mountain biking started in Northern California, and that is called Clunkers. It's a very amazing history lesson on how bikes progress and how they were taking just like regular street bikes and basically just morphing them into downhill machines. It's 
really cool for you guys that want to get some background on it. There's another great documentary called The Moment, Vancouver and North Shore Riding and where that type of free ride movement started from. So I suggest those two things. That'll fill your brain with a lot of knowledge. Daniel Chen, how's it going being a full-time YouTuber? Pretty, 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 pretty good. That about sums it up, I guess. I like it. Uh, so far, so good. I don't know what the future is going to bring, but I'm hopeful. I really would love to sustain this as a lifestyle and make you guys videos every week. I love doing it. I love learning how to do it. It's about progression for me on the bike and off right now. I never even created a single video before this channel, so it's kind of fun if you go back and look at the beginning ones till now, and it looks a little cringy, but hey. That's all part of the process. Steph Bautista wants to know on any given ride, what are the things that maybe I struggle with the most or hesitate on or think about beforehand? I would say on the average ride recently, because uh, I was off the bike for almost two months from my knockout crash, it's been fitness. So I've been struggling on the climbs a little bit lately. It's amazing how quickly your lungs and your stamina goes away if you're not riding consistently. So a lot of you that are new, it gets better. And a lot of you that have been injured know the drill. That's just how it's going to go in mountain biking. You really have to stay consistent on the bike if you're riding trails to keep up. So riding with other people lately has been a little bit anxiety inducing because I feel like I don't want to be that person holding people up. So right now I'm basically trying to ride more to increase that, but it's a slow process. I mean, it's like starting over after two months of not riding. That's just what your body says, you know? Bill Vela asked, GoPro stuff, what do I use to edit? Uh, right now I'm using Final Cut Pro. When I started the channel and for a long time, I used just iMovie. Within the last year, I started using Final Cut and basically taught myself the program. I would say iMovie to Final Cut Pro. It's like moving in from a one bedroom apartment to a large house. There's just so many more options and there's so many more rooms and so many more creative things that you can do if you open up the software and open up your learning and time to put in the work. If you guys have been watching the channel, you can see that transition happen. I can do so many more tweaks and adjustments to color, sound, titles, and just editing that I wasn't able to do before. Don Benincasa wants to know what was going through my head when I started the channel. I've touched on this question a little bit before, but as a reminder into all of you newcomers, uh, I started the channel uh, as kind of uh, an experiment because uh, my wife Heather got tired of me making videos for her and Pip. I used to take out my little Rilo 360 camera on the trails and talk to the dog and talk to her and uh, just film my descents. And I think she got to the point where she was like, okay, enough. Uh, it's time for you to do something different and she kind of pushed me into creating the channel. I had the idea anyway, but she gave me that extra support. So thank you, Heather, and uh, that's the short story. Ryan James McShane wants to know if I'm a solo act or if I work with anyone else on the videos. I'm a solo act. That's it. That's that's the kind of full-time job when you're a YouTuber. You're a marketing manager, you're a social media manager, you are a producer, a director, a creator, you're editing, you're, you're a one-man team. That's the grind of YouTube, I guess, is putting in the work. And that's the thing that a lot of people don't understand before they start a YouTube channel. I've talked to so many people that are new to it and uh, they didn't realize how much work it is. If you want to do it correctly, put in the time in each one of those categories to help elevate what you're doing. Okay, let's get to some YouTube questions. Lakewood MTB asks, and let me get this straight. Uh, does the channel stress you out knowing so many people want content these days? Is it hard to come up with new ideas? I won't say it stresses me out, but I definitely feel an obligation uh, because I do look at this as my job. It's not hard to go out and film a mountain bike ride, but I want to bring something original every week. And the channel started with just trail guides. And I went through those probably in the first year and a half, most of them anyway, most of trail guides around Southern California. Now that the audience has grown so much, a lot of people are outside of California and around the world, to be honest. I get comments from Poland, Argentina, uh, Australia, all over every single week. So it's important for me to create content that is universal with a focus on my local trails. I try to plan things out, you know, plan things out a week or two or, or have a little book of ideas, video ideas, locations, trips. I want to keep it interesting and not stale. Johnny Akananopoulos wants to know, what's something I've learned about myself in the process of uh, video creation? This is going to sound so cliche, but you know that like term, you can do whatever you put your mind to. I really use that in my life for a long time. It's just a thing to say, I feel like, and didn't know it. But starting the channel really kind of proved that, like I wanted to do this, I wanted to put in the time, and I accepted the process. You put your mind to something, and you stick to it, and you can do it. Like, I'm not some crazy editing machine going into this. I didn't know anything about cameras or editing. All I had was like an idea and uh, motivation. I think I did take a little bit from my journalism background and stories and creating 
kind of like a beginning, middle, and end. That's about it. Everything else was me just finding my way along this process. With that, I'll say that I, I did find a new passion in editing. How tedious it can be with one little title or one little sound bite. Sometimes you're, you're looking for something and how to fix something or how to put something together and then it'll go by three hours just in like a two second part of the video. So if you wanna make good videos, get lost in the details, but don't think that you're ever gonna make it 100% perfect. At some point you have to say like, is 85, 90% good enough? Because I'll be here forever. Learn when to let go and hit that upload button. Andre's Adventures wants to know, and I get this one quite a bit, do I naturally talk in my videos or do I have it memorized or scripted? I'm an off the cuff guy. Sometimes I have an idea of what I wanna get through, like the beginning of this intro, I was like, oh, we gotta do a, a prize giveaway, we gotta introduce this thing. But it's not written down. I feel like for me, I'm more of a natural talker and uh, I like to just talk to you guys. That's just my personal preference. A lot of people use scripts. I think it's a, a more defined way to get right to the point. I think that's a great option too, but you gotta do whatever your personality craves. Monis asks, can I give a breakdown of my POV setup? Yes, I can, I get this question a lot. Boom, I've got it right here. I use a stuntman chesty. I like this because it's kind of a two-in-one. It's a chest mount, but it's also a chest protector in some way. I had that recent crash and my ribs and my back ribs were completely bruised, but this area wasn't. A lot of people get scared of falling on their GoPro, but this setup is very sturdy. And also because it's so sturdy and it's strapped from both top and both bottom, it keeps the camera really stable. A lot of you guys ask also, how do I you know, not use a gimbal and, and have it look kind of fluid and steady? The trick really is to strap these straps as tight as you possibly can, almost to the point where it's not that comfortable, but you just get used to it. The less the camera moves around around you when you're going down those bumpy things, easier it is for the camera to stabilize it. If your body's shaking the camera and this thing is going all over the place, this thing is gonna have a much harder time. And this thing is right now the GoPro Hero 8. I have a windscreen on there that I put over to block out that wind noise. It lets in a little bit, but it's enough to where you kind of feel the sounds of the trail. And the reason I'm using the Hero 8 and not the 9, the 9 was glitching out, I was getting SD card errors. It sometimes would just shut off in the middle of a ride. I lost two full rides filming with it. I am on my second one, and the second one started having SD card errors too. And I use the Hero 9 as kind of an alternate angle. So a lot of the stuff you see in the trail for me, like if I'm just filming myself going by in a jump or something, that's from the 9 that I put on a little tripod. So I have two cameras with me. There's a little background. Hit me up with any questions below. Happy to answer more. Single track dad asks, do I still skate? For those of you that don't know, I've been skating since I was 12 years old. I grew up in a skate park. I had a professional skate career uh, for a number of years and I've been Skating, I wanna say, geez, is it like 30 years of my life now, wow. I don't skate as much as I used to. In fact, I feel like I keep saying I, I'm gonna go skate next week or I'm gonna go skate soon and mountain biking just takes the reins over. But I wanna prioritize getting on the board more. Okay, now we're on Instagram. Got some good ones here. Let's start with Dewey Oxberger. He wants to know, should an order of buffalo wings be six, eight, or 10? Six or 12. I'm a big wing connoisseur. I love buffalo wings and I uh, make my own at home in the grill trying different sauces and Sprinkles, yeah, sprinkles. Sunglass Rob wants to know, do I think I can go back to riding without my prescription now that I'm working with Sport RX? Yeah, I work with Sport RX. These are prescription glasses from them. I All of my riding glasses are prescription. Huge upgrade in not only in my safety, but in how I ride my bike. I was riding blind literally on the trail for years and didn't know it. I, the only way I can describe it is it felt like, uh, you know you're watching YouTube when it doesn't do the proper setting, you're watching 480p, and then all of a sudden you hit the, the 2K marker and it's like, whoa, oh my God, it's like a completely different world. That's how it felt putting on glasses. I was just used to riding like that, you know, and now I can see further down the trail. So thanks to Sport RX for, uh, Help me see the trail. Frank Root wants to know what protection gear I wear on the trail. Local trails, I have a trail helmet and knee pads on. For gnarlier trails and bike parks, always a full face, goggles, knee pads, power sword all day. I think I'm saying that right. Wants to know if there was ever a time when I thought the channel would not be successful. Yes, and every day still. It's all relative to what you look at, right? Like if I, if I look at to where the channel was when it started, it's a huge success. If I look to where I want it to be, or if I look to uh, other channels and what they're doing, it's a motivation to get there. It's a motivation to do better. I'm just learning in my old age now to enjoy the journey as much as the destination, just like a road trip. I enjoy the little things in those road trips off the trail as much as on the trail. The drives, the, be the beautiful desert landscapes, the mountains, um, just taking it in. That's why I brought in appreciation stations to the trail. Appreciate the moments 
because you're not going to get those back. Take a minute in the trail and stop and have a look around because mountain biking brings you to a beautiful place in beautiful places. Jinjarin wants to know, do I feel the pressure to update antics for YouTube and possibly leading to crashes or injuries? I wouldn't say I feel a pressure to update antics, but I definitely think when I turn that camera on, it's on. It's a little bit of a boost of confidence because I feel like honestly, after a while, I started to feel like I really am riding with you guys. When I'm talking to you guys, I kind of like know some of your names. I know a lot of you on Patreon. So I feel like we're, we're hanging out. The difference between riding solo and riding with your friends, you feel more motivated. But what I'm trying to do lately and in, in when I realize that feeling coming on is remind myself that I am alone. I have to pull back sometimes and say like, is it worth it? There's a difference between riding solo and riding with your friends. If I'm really out there and a place that maybe I feel pretty alone, literally, I try to pull back. Sunday Sanchez wants to know what hurt more, my worst MTB crash or my worst skate crash? Both equally in different ways. In skateboarding, I had an injury that basically ended my skate career and didn't know it at the time. Tore all the ligaments in my ankle and I was off the board for like a year. Mentally, skateboarding. Physically, mountain biking. I got knocked out, woke up with bruised ribs, didn't know where I was, felt disoriented. That was the scariest because I felt like I was not in control of my body. I woke up to making some kind of crazy noises I wasn't even aware that I was making. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't even know where I was for a little bit. Chucky Zombie asked, when I skated, who were my sponsors and what was the, the biggest highlight from that? When I was the most established in it, I rode for Foundation Skateboards, Split Clothing, Van Shoes, uh, Venture Trucks. I I think I'm probably missing out a couple here. It doesn't really matter. The biggest highlight for me was right after high school, I had entered community college and I had sent a sponsor me tape to Tom Yetto, which is the owner of Foundation Zero and Toy Machine. And it was the company for me. Like if I had one choice, it was to ride for Tom Yetto. I had friends that were pro, a good friend of mine, Donnie Barley, put my video in Todd Swang's hand, the owner of it, and they watched it and Every year, Tom Yetto would do a huge tour from California to the East Coast, all the way up through Canada, and then back down to Southern California. And he was like, you can go to college and you're already enrolled, or we can come through, we're about to go through Connecticut, we can throw you in the van and see how it goes. You only get one shot sometimes in life to experience something like that. And at like 19 years old, there's literally nothing more I wanted in my life than that experience or the shot at becoming a pro skater. Three vans showed up that week, and this was before Bam uh, was Bam. You know, he was just making his CKY videos back then. He was actually straight edge, never had a drink. Jamie Thomas rolls up with Mike Maldonado, Alyssa Steamer, Carrie Getz, every single person that you could imagine on the Tamiedo team in the glory days were there welcoming me, hanging out with my dog and my family. And it was just a surreal experience. I couldn't believe, it was like a dream. You know, like you wake up sometimes, you're like, oh man, that would have been awesome. This was happening to me. Signed off on college. I said, I'll go back at some point. I made myself a promise, which I did. Uh, I jumped in the van and went on a two month tour with my favorite skaters who became some of my best friends. I flew back to Connecticut, grabbed my stuff, and then flew back out and moved in to Huntington Beach, which eventually became the Piss Drunks. Uh, a story for another day and some crazy stuff that went on there but that was a pretty big highlight the start of my skate career blossoming into something from all the work that I put into led to that all right you guys I think that's enough the video has gone on longer than I thought it would I'm a talker what can I say thanks for all of your questions honestly if you made it this far you really care new videos every week I'll be back next week don't forget to leave your comment below I'm gonna pick the winner you get the name the drone you get all that free stuff that I talked about in the beginning of the video if you want to join me on patreon here it is again. We would welcome you. We have a great community there. We just finished up a group ride from Santiago Oaks this week. Had a blast, hung out afterward. You guys are awesome. I'm Tony from the Outsider MTB channel, and with that, thank you so much, and I'll see you next week.